Hey y'all, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess, if you're new here, I'm really glad you're here. If you're not new here, I'm also glad you're here. I am, obviously I'm standing in my barnyard this morning, I'm getting ready to go out and milk my goats. And I wanted to invite you guys, uh, kind of show you the routine that we're settling into. The goats have been home for almost two weeks. This is not, if, you're, if you have not been with me for very long, it's not my first time to have goats. I previously had them for about seven years. They were the first like larger farm animal we ever had. And we have decided to return into goat keeping for the sake of having uh, goat's milk on the farm as well as just the enjoyment of the animals. I really, they're really fun, like pet-like animals to have. And I want to show you what our routine looks like. So you may be able to hear up here, they're already hollering at me. So we got the goats and um, we don't have their pen set up yet. Obviously we had a place to keep them right now. They're in a stall in the barn, but this is not a long-term solution. Uh, so our routine is gonna change a little bit. I'm gonna, I'll show you what our plan is moving forward. Hello rooster. All right, good morning. Good morning, girls. Our barn is set up with a milk room. Um, eventually, we're gonna build a goat barn out in the woods. We were actually talking yesterday, and I think we're gonna pump the brakes on that and actually just build the pen and put a gate in to where I can access this barn. Just realistically, this time of year is not the best time to be trying to build structures when we're really focusing on like garden infrastructure and like getting into the full sw swing of spring. We're also about to break ground on building our house. So I suggested to my yesterday that we nix the dedicated goat barn until next winter uh, because having access to this, obviously, this is fine. So uh, basically right through this barn, we're going to put a gate out to where our goat pasture, like where we planned in the woods for the goats to be. And every evening I will bring the goats through that gate into this barn, put them in the stall that they're currently staying in and uh, milk them let them sleep in the stall in the barn and in the morning milk them again and let them back out into their yard and i don't know like we'll see i think that's probably going to go pretty well maybe we'll decide we don't need a dedicated goat barn because i don't plan on letting this goat herd get very large i don't want to have more than a few goats in milk at a time i'm already like swimming in goat's milk with just these three so i come out every morning and i get some hot soapy water, grab some rags. Now, what I'm about to do is probably not gonna be typical for people who do not have like a dedicated milk room. But I have a pesky barn cat that likes to try to get in my milk pail while I'm milking. So what I've been doing before I even start milking is I'm going ahead and setting up my strainer and the jars that I'm gonna strain my milk into. I have this large strainer that is made for home dairies. This is a filter. I'm just gonna put this in here and go ahead and set this up. So at first when I was milking them, I just have this little like, food container that I got from the restaurant store that I've been milking into. These goats are not very kicky, praise the Lord. Um, and so I don't have to worry too much. Now, if you have a really kicky goat that's not super cooperative with being milked, um, what I've always done for that is I milk into a quart-sized jar that I can hold with one hand and milk with the other. But I don't have to do that right now. I can actually sit a big open bucket underneath them and they're not gonna kick it, which is nice. But I was dealing with my pesky cat and every time I set this down on the ground, she was trying to get in it. So what I've been doing is just walking in here and pouring the milk into the strainer between goats. There she is, coming to get in it. Toast the ghost, what you doing girl? Good morning. <laughs> you goofs. So I go ahead and grab this. This is our feed room. So when you get new animals, you pretty much need to find out what they're eating at the place they're coming from because just doing a hard shift can be kind of difficult. Uh, so what 
we're feeding right now is a mix between dairy goat pellets, um, about two thirds dairy goat pellets and about a third sweet feed. So in the morning I come in here and mix up enough for this morning and tonight. So I won't have to do this on the night milk. And I'm just mixing it directly into this little bucket. By no means is this a direct science. <laughs> I'm just roundabout doing it. So the guy I got my goats from uh, was feeding all of his milkers alfalfa. If you do not know this, alfalfa is extremely expensive, especially in places where it doesn't really readily grow. So um, right now, I started to adjust them. I'm still giving them a little bit of alfalfa, but for the most part, they're just eating the coastal hay that the rest of our farm eats. When I first brought them in and I put the coastal hay in, they're like, what is this garbage? So what I'm doing is every morning and every evening when I come out here to milk, I put a flake of this compressed alfalfa hay on top of their other hay. They immediately flock to it. And I'm feeding right about a quart or so of this grain mixture, which I'm gonna go ahead and dump here into the stanchion. You'll hear this baby goat over here fussing. So I, I bought a bottle baby with these three does and milk. He's unrelated to them. Um, and my idea was I'll go ahead and get him now, I'll help me use some of the excess milk, and then he uh, will be my breeder in the future, which is still the plan, but one of the does actually adopted him. And that's pretty wild. That's you know, it's not unheard of with goats, but it is somewhat unusual. They're not typically <laughs> adopting kids that are not there. Sometimes I don't even take care of their own kids. But uh, because of that, I have to put him apart overnight, just like you do in any kid sharing situation. So I don't have to give him bottles anymore, but I do have to separate him from his adoptive mom so that I can milk her in the morning and get something. Animals are creatures of habit. You can actually train them like what order they go in, like what to expect. The main thing is you have to be consistent. So I come out, I put the alfalfa hay in that keeps them all from rushing the gate because they're not getting a whole lot of that alfalfa. They wanna give their full focus to eating it while it's there. Whereas if that feeder was full of alfalfa all the time, they would eventually like get used to it being there and it wouldn't have much of a draw. So we have here Claire, Virgie and Winnie. Uh, Virgie is first. Come on, come milk. Not up there, good girl. Well, holding the camera made that less impressive, but they're learning their order, which is really cool. Now that order is not for any real specific reason other than the fact that when the girls first got here, Virgie and Claire were not eating very well and Winnie was. And so I was getting the first two on the stanchion and they weren't really eating, but they're still making milk, so they need to eat. Uh, so what I was doing was milking Virgie and Claire first, putting them back in the, sta in the stall, and then while I was milking Winnie, I would put some grain in a bucket in there for them so that they would eat while they were relaxed. But once they started eating on the stanchion, and I don't do that anymore, um, that was just a brief thing. And now they've just started to learn this order, so we're sticking with it. All right, so I just got my rag all wet with the soapy water. I'm washing her udder off. Uh, Virgie has a very lopsided udder. That's why I got her at a deal, because uh, it's a flaw but she still makes milk and she's still a good goat. She's a slow eater, so she's my best bet in really showing you guys this process. Um, you can see one side is a lot larger than the other. So with milking a goat, um, if you imagine a rubber glove full of liquid, and if you squeeze one of the fingers, the liquid will go back in the glove. That's very much how a goat's udder and teats work. So when you're milking, you kind of have to pinch off the teat um, to block the milk that's in there in there so it doesn't go back in the udder and then you squeeze. So we're gonna squirt one squirt out of each side just to make sure that it's clear. Put our bucket underneath and start milking. So 
she's a little difficult to milk for long two-handed because when the right side runs out of milk, it makes you feel really lopsided. <laughs> So with the alfalfa, I'm actually gonna start looking for another source of it. I'm, I'm liking how it's helping our routine move along to like give them that flake of alfalfa in the morning and the evening. Uh, with a rounded dairy goat ration, I don't really feel like feeding alfalfa is necessary. Alfalfa is a really high protein, but since that's what they're used to, I don't wanna just like completely cut it out. And now that I see how that little treat um, kind of helps, this process go. I, I like having it, but it is fairly expensive. So I'm doing a little research into like what my options are locally. And we're also planning on slowly shifting them over to a dairy goat feed that's a non-GMO grain from uh, where we get all of our other grain, we order it. And I just, right now I'm having to like go to a local feed store to buy their grain. And since all of our other grain comes together, I'm, I would like to roll that into the other order just for the sake of saving time. All right, she's still eating, she's very slow. Here's the milk. She is the lowest producer of the three since really only one side of her udder is producing a lot. And since this is close, I'm just coming in here, going ahead and pouring that in. Now, if I was in a situation that I was milking and I wasn't, you know, 20 feet away from a milk room, I would have to get like a pail with a lid or spray the cat with a bottle or something like to teach her to leave it alone. As it is, like that's just what I've been doing. All right, I think she's done. Okay, move this out of the way. Here you go, girly. All right, I need to set my camera down next time or you guys are not gonna see the switch over. So I cannot hold my camera straight and <laughs> make sure the right goat comes out. Now back when um, I had a lot of goats and I might be milking eight plus goats in the morning, that takes a lot longer. Um, and I would bring out, when it was really hot, I would bring out a little cooler with ice in it and I would milk into jars and put it into the ice to get it starting cooling down because with raw milk, you really wanna get it cold as soon as possible. Like within an hour of bringing it out of the animal, you wanna get it under, I think they say like 45 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like five Celsius, just to inhibit any sort of bacterial growth. Obviously we're trying to keep everything really clean, but we are milking into an open pail in a barn. So realistically, there's probably some exposure to bacteria here. And just getting everything really cold is a safety measure and it preserves the flavor longer because uh, basically milk has a certain amount of sugars in it. Bacteria eats those sugars. And so when you get the milk cold faster, you're inhibiting bacterial growth. And then if you drink it fresh, like within the first few days being out of the animal, it's still really sweet. Now if you wait a week, a lot of that sugar is going to have been consumed because it's raw milk, it's not pasteurized, which is has a lot of benefits to drink it raw. Obviously that we have bacteria in our bodies, we have bacteria in our guts. And drinking raw milk can help that, but the flavor does change over the course, really especially after the first week, and that's with goat's milk and cow's milk. You're gonna get the best flavor the fresher that you consume it. She's the one that adopted the little kid. So I'm really only getting a lot of milk out of her in the mornings. In the evenings, she's empty because he's been in with her all day. I really like milking into this container because it has measurements on it. So I can see exactly how much milk is in here before I pour it into the jar. I have overflowed so many jars because I'm not good at guessing that. So anyway, that should fill this up. Now Winnie, the one I milked last, she's the heaviest milker. So between the three of them in the morning, I'm getting about a gallon. So Virgie produces about a quart or so. Claire produces about a quart and a half. And then Winnie produces a little over two quarts. All right, back out here. She's a little bit of a slow eater too. So it's gonna take a little bit longer today, obviously, because I'm making a video. But right now that they know what they're doing, I know what I'm doing, we're in our groove, we have our order, we have it down. Um, it's taking me 19 minutes to milk the goats. So that is from when I walk in the barn to when I walk out. That's pretty good. Like I am completely happy with that now. 
my goats are not obstinate, which is awesome. Uh, that helps a lot. Also, there are traits in goats. It's really hard. I mean, you can ask about them when you're goat shopping and maybe you'll get this information. But in my experience, you kind of just luck out with it. Um, the orifices on goat's teats, like the holes, how much, how much milk is allowed to come out at once makes a really big difference in how long it has to milk. So these goats have all, th this is not their first freshening. They're all like four or five years old. So they've been milked a few times, which that affects the orifice size. But also that's just like a genetic trait. And these goats all milk out pretty quickly. And, and that is lending to me being able to get this done pretty fast. All right. So Winnie here is, I will jokingly say she's the rudest. She's not rude, she's just very dominant. And the thing is with dominance, and I think this stands to say for animals and with people, <laughs> often comes off as extreme rudeness. And so Winnie is pushy, she eats fastest, uh, she pushes to the front, she pushes the other goats out of the way. She tries to push me around. That's why like when I pull her out, I make her stand there for a second. Just because if you allow any animal to push you around, you teach them that that's okay. Ultimately, it teaches them a message in dominance that they're running the show with you. And it's really not good for your animals to think that. Now she is a killer milker. Um, as far as having like a pretty udder, easy to milk and making a lot of milk. I'm really glad to have her. However, her personality is one that's a little harder to deal with. So with some goats, especially ones that have raised all their kids, a lot of times they won't want to let their milk down for you, in which case you'll like bump on their udder or shake their udder this way, which is what a kid does whenever they come to nurse, they headbutt the udders. Um, it's actually extremely, they're very aggressive with it. I, I, when people first told me hit their udder, I was like, oh, I don't want to hurt them. It's the only context I had was being a nursing mother myself. I'm like, no, don't do that. But then I watch, I've watched go kids literally come, especially when a mom has twins she's feeding and they come at the same time and start headbutting their udder. I've literally watched them pick their uh, mother up off her back feet like push head butter so hard her back feet come off the ground oh my goodness so if you have a goat that doesn't want to let down you can definitely palpate or uh, put some pressure on the udder with these goats because they were pretty much they were raised in a it's not he's not he's not commercial he's just got a really large scale system and he does milk a lot of does and he pulls kids at birth uh, they do not hold their do their milk back at all they immediately let everything down so i don't really have to do a whole lot of that they're just used to being milked by people all right so i started this clip and i'm sure i'll speed it up for you guys it's currently at three minutes which means that i just milked her out entirely uh with about a half gallon of milk in three minutes which is pretty darn good now one benefit of the alfalfa over here is that they're typically pretty eager to get back into the stall where the hay is that's also a really good thing to have established some sort of incentive uh, because goats are fairly mischievous they do really push boundaries and they will try to be dominant over you if they feel like they can, especially when you're talking about large goats like this. They're just stubborn creatures, but they are very easily incentivized by food and treats. And so, like for instance, if these goats understood that there was a bucket hanging right there full of the grain that they're very excited to eat, when they came off the stanchion, they would try to go that way. But since they know there's that alfalfa that there's only so much of in the trough, they are coming off the stanchion and immediately going back to the stall which is great that's how i want it i hope they never learn that that bucket's hanging up there <laughs> if, the, if we could maintain this sense of order i would be very happy with it she's got a tiny bit of food left she eats pretty fast so the other benefit of me coming and pouring the milk in as we go is that 
when I'm done milking, I'm pretty much done straining too. You all done? All right. Come along. Now this guy knows the drill because he wants to get back in there to mom so he can eat. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Now when I have goat kids that are like purely damn raised like they were born to a mother and this is my first time ever having an adopted goat kid before uh, but as far as damn raised goat kids the first few weeks that I'm separating them overnight which you start that at two weeks old um, after they're born you can separate them at night milk the dough in the morning put the babies back in the babies eat all day and then at night you separate them again so that you can milk in the morning when the babies are still really small sometimes I'll give them a bottle with just an ounce or two of milk first thing in the morning because they've been in the stall all night long and I've just emptied their moms out and it also gives me an opportunity it gives them a little bit of like a boost in the morning some nourishment before her milk replenishes for them to eat but it also gives me the opportunity to feed them and handle them because uh, damn raised kids if they're not handled will one be fairly aloof like you really want to handle them but also by introducing a bottle at two weeks old and making sure they can take one if anything ever happens to the dough I know that I'll have a backup plan for the baby so uh, the first goat that I ever lost which of course has been like a lot of years ago now but her name was delilah and she had had two bucklings this was like one of the most like traumatic losses in my experience in farming because when not only was it sad that she died when she died her babies were six weeks old and they never had a bottle before they still or maybe they were four weeks old they still needed milk and they would not take a bottle we ended up having to tube feed i ended up having to give one of them to a more experienced goat keeper that could tube feed more around the clock and she ended up raising that buck up and ended up using him as a breeder he was a really nice buck uh, but yeah i i want to avoid that so i like to make sure even if we're dam raising that the kids on my farm know how to take a bottle and they know how to be handled by me that's not an issue with this little dude because he came as a bottle baby um so i don't really mind it looks like he got in the water trough his whole bottom side and belly are completely soaking wet i have had to watch him uh with having him in with her to make sure he's not eating way too much and getting milk scours he did at one point start to get a little bit of diarrhea and i had to pull him out some all right so this is my soapy water i always go ahead and dump that off I'm gonna take a hose and go ahead and spray this off to make sure it's clean. Maya did make a video when he built this stanchion last week and put it on his channel, Maya's Workshop. I'll put a link to it. The only amendment that we made after he made the video, which he told me when he brought this out, he said we may need to put a non-slip pad on because he used this composite decking that can get wet. And uh, the first day that I tried to milk on here, the goats were slipping all over the place. So he ran down to, I don't know, the feed store, one of them, and got one of these non-slip mats for animals and for barns and cut it to size. And that's been great. So now all of these ladies are gonna hang out in here, finish their alfalfa. They've got water in here. Now obviously you could keep goats in a barn like this. There are people who live in very cold places that their goats live in a barn like this for six months out of the year. Um, there's nothing like inherently wrong with it. However, goats are happiest when they have brows and you know room to move around and are able to exercise and stuff. So this is a temporary solution. Grab my stuff here. I need to put lids on these jars of milk. So I put lids on. We have this little date sticker thing that adds the dates to the top of our milk. Makes it a lot easier to scrape it off and reuse the lids. Now all of our lids are old, so they have lots of shadows of dates from being previously used since before we started using stickers. All right, so this needs to go in the freezer, as I was mentioning, it needs to get cold fast. So we put it in the freezer for an hour or two and set an alarm on the phone to make sure that we don't forget. Now I wash everything up in here with very hot, soapy water. Uh, we do have a dishwasher out in our milk room, which we use to sanitize jars um, after they've been used so that we're putting 
our milk in as clean of vessels as possible. Now that everything is sitting out, milk is getting cold, I've got my uh, dirty rags and stuff here that I will take in the house to wash in the washing machine. They're happily munching away on the remainder of that alfalfa. And I'll show you guys out here. Of course, this is the cow milking area. But um, we'll go through. So this is the back side of the barn. Um, this on this corner is where the milk room is. So this, this door right here opens up. And we're going to actually rework this fence a little bit to add a gate. And then fence in. This is the goat area that we have had planned. And our plan is to build a barn in the middle of that. And I think we still will at some point. I don't know. This may just be so convenient we don't need to. But we're going to fence in this wooded area with a little bit of the grass. So in the morning after milking, we'll set them loose out in this space. And in the evening, bring them back in. Toast, you're still looking for a little milk, aren't you? Well, y'all, that is my morning milking routine. I'm spending a little less than an hour of every one of my days uh, getting a little more than a gallon and a half of goat's milk a day, which is really more than I, I need. I really just wanted it for my coffee and cooking things. I'm very happy with the system. I'm very happy with the goats that we have. I'm very happy with the ease of this process. Um, we got them and I felt like, oh, we're so not ready. We didn't build that barn yet. And we're like, we'll make do with what we have. And then kind of realized like, oh man, this is actually perfectly functional setup for no more goats than we have as long as we make them a yard to go into. So that's really awesome. And I don't know, I hope this helps. If you are considering getting goats and you felt really overwhelmed by the idea, obviously a dairy animal is a huge commitment. You do have to milk them every morning and every evening. You can, you can pare them down to one milking a day. Obviously you get less milk. And it, and it also depends on what point in their, just, uh, in their lactation they are, um, on how easily that goes and how high producing the animal is. Like not all animals easily move over to one milking a day if they are used to being milked twice a day and are heavy producers. But you can do it. You can pare it down to have less of a commitment. It is a commitment. But we're homebodies. We're here anyway. Obviously, for us, we're already milking cows. We already have, you know, a pretty substantial operation that we're very tied to. We're not doing a lot of like running around and traveling without already having to find somebody to cover this. So for us, it really isn't adding that much, and I love it. It is just such a lovely way to start and end every day. Those times in the barn of milking are some of my most precious quiet times. And I get to have milk in my coffee, which is awesome. Hope this helps. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and all the days you do. I bless you. Until next time.